Whether an organization is moving to the cloud for the first time, or moving from a single cloud provider to multiple providers, how you calculate the total cost of ownership of the IT infrastructure will vary. In IT, the total cost of ownership refers to a comprehensive assessment of all of the layers within the infrastructure and other associated costs across the business over time. This includes acquiring hardware and software, management and support, communications, and user expenses and the cost of service downtime, training, and other productivity losses. Let me use an analogy to explain this. Let's say there are two main ways for your business to get pizza. One, you make it, we'll call that on-premises pizza. Two, Google makes it, we'll call that Google Cloud Pizza. Now, if you're making on-premises pizzas, you need to pay for the ingredients, and you also need to pay for the tools to make it, the gas to cook it, maintenance of the kitchen, kitchen staff, and so on. And don't forget all the time someone has to invest in preparing it. I'm sure you could easily draw up a long list of things that add to the total cost here. If you change from on-premises pizzas to Google Cloud pizzas, suddenly you'd be responsible for a lot less. You would just choose the pizza you want, maybe the custom toppings, order it and eat. And if you need more pizzas one day, you just order more and pay for what you order. So bringing this back to the real world, Historically, when companies spent a substantial amount of money up front to set up their IT infrastructure, the capital expenditure would include paying for data center space and associated costs such as power and cooling, storage systems, networking, hardware, software, and security systems. The total cost of ownership, or TCO, in this case would be the cost of setting up, managing, controlling, and optimizing every layer of this stack in addition to the personnel required and skilled workers. Before the cloud, IT CapEx costs were often managed centrally. For accounting teams, a data center, for example, would be treated as a property or asset with a lifespan of three to 10 years and with a depreciation value for tax purposes. When organizations run their business using public cloud services, much of their capital expenditure no longer applies. Instead, there's a shift towards a pay-as-you-go OPEX model. This shift opens up room for their technology teams to focus more on building innovative solutions in the cloud instead of maintaining the existing infrastructure. It's worth mentioning that some organizations may choose to keep some of their business running on-premises and some running on public cloud. The total cost of ownership for them would be more complex. The total cost of ownership when using cloud technology is not just about assessing cost savings. You also need to think about the value you gain over time. The obvious value is that cloud absorbs the effort that organizations traditionally put into hosting their applications or data on premises, allowing them to shift focus from maintaining status quo to higher value work. There's also indirect value. The cloud improves efficiency, reliability, and security, enabling greater productivity and innovation for businesses. So as we've talked about in this video, assessing IT total cost of ownership can vary depending on an organization's cloud adoption goals and can continue to evolve over time. Google Cloud provides tools to help monitor and control costs and maximize value. Learn more about those in the next video.